Welcome back to the OHI Podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Buckeye Boggs. That man over there is the wild man, Chris Wilds. Chris, if you would have told me that the spring portal window would come and go, and Ohio State's quarterback room would still have five scholarship quarterbacks, I would have told you you're crazy. Yeah. That you needed to be submitted to a mental hospital. That there was no way in God's green earth we would keep all five of those guys in the quarterback room for 2024. But here we are, May 1st, and all five of them are still with the program. How is this even possible? I'll be honest, Derek. I have no idea. I have no idea. Unless they are just... I mean, obviously, I think we know that right now it's a two-horse race for the starter's position. Right. Will Howard and Devin Brown. Will Howard, Devin Brown. Those are your one-two guys. Lincoln maybe just rolling the dice, and, you know, like we talked about before, may just be taking it, betting on himself. Or he just wants another year of development under Ryan Day before he makes the transfer. Yeah, you know, there's there's a part of me that's – I get both freshmen staying, Aaron Nolan and, and now, Here's uh, the question. Do they both take a red shirt this year? No, I, do, I, I, I don't think – I think staying right now is the number three. I really do. I think he's the number three right now. Um, I would I would have agreed with you until we watched him in person at the spring game. I didn't say he was ready. I'm just saying I think he's the number three right now on the depth chart. And I think that's a little bit of, or at least Ryan Day is telling him and Lincoln they're competing for number three. They did something to keep all five of those guys in the room. I'm At first I was surprised by Aaron Nolan, but then I thought, you know what? I think he came in expecting to take a red shirt. So I don't think that surprised me all that much. I think he came in with the expectation that his first year was going to be a red shirt year. So it's not going to hurt him to sit at the bench, learn under Day uh, and and Kelly, and you know just take and compete next season for for a starting job. I think Saiyan is I think he's a competitor, but I also think that Day thinks that he could be the future. He also and needs he needs to physically get bigger. He does. He needs to physically get bigger because he cannot physically take the pounding that a big 10 quarterback is going to take no given his slight frame right now so i think he's probably been told he's in the mix for number three still i don't know that he is um i think he might be i i think he could be the number three guy um i think it comes down to what he and lincoln look like as you proceed lincoln on the other hand is completely physically ready to go out there and compete in the Big Ten. I just don't know that he has... Man, if you could take Lincoln's physical physical frame and put Saiyan's ability into that, that would be a scary, scary thing to watch. Unfortunately, right now you can't. Maybe Saiyan gets somewhere towards you know near that. I don't know that he's ever going to be as physically... Um, as big physically as what Lincoln is. But who knows? Lincoln's not exactly Will he's not a Howard huge, here. Yeah, he's not a huge guy, but he's a pretty physically well physically put together kid. I mean, if you're just if you're just looking at you stand all five of them side by side. Will Howard's obviously the most impressive looking. Will, Will Howard ever. reminds me of freaking Ben Roethlisberger. He's and I and I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I would be okay with that. Um. So no, uh, as long so, as he doesn't partake in the same extracurricular activity. So. This, I mean, there is, you know, there was a lot of talk, you know, what would happen this spring? Would Will Howard end up back in the transfer portal? Nope. He's all in this year. So it's, it's either, he's either going to be the man or, or the, his last year is going to be spent not being the man here in Columbus, Ohio. The most, the most quotable guy on the team. He's still around with us too. Devin I Brown. Like Devin Brown. Bur- he burned the boats. They, so Whether, he couldn't leave. He, he was, he's stuck on this Island, right? He burned um, the boats and, uh, you know, 
put the trolls down in the basement. So yeah, kept kept uh, kept the kept the media in the basement with their moms. Uh, you've got Lincoln Keenholz, who you and I both thought for sure he would be the one. That I would thought he was dead. World. Yeah, I thought he. Was I was to... kind of saying he needs to go back to the Dakotas and be a superstar there for North Dakota State or whoever. And he, you're right, he still might, and he still could, but he's he likes it in Columbus, and he's going to give it another year of development. Maybe he's thinking, you know what, I'm I'm okay developing a full full another season this year. I can, you know, he was redshirted last year. He's only a redshirt freshman this year. He'll be a technically only a sophomore next year, and then he's like, I'll compete next year. Um, yeah, then you got the two freshmen and I was hoping we could keep both. And we absolutely did. I'll tell you what, next spring is going to be incredibly competitive and interesting. But as far as this season is concerned, this might be the most talented, deep quarterback room that Ohio state has had in the transfer portal era. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm I'm also wondering, Eric, and maybe you can enlighten me a little bit on this. We have the new NCAA rule, which allows for immediate eligibility to any athlete who transfers during the 23-24 academic year. Do they have to transfer? Can they, can they transfer outside the portal and still gain eligibility? Uh, you With mean that new rule? You mean transfer out and play immediately? With that new the new rule, I don't believe so, because there's still portal windows. There are. I just I think I I you know I don't I don't I have to dig a little bit deeper into that. That's a good question, Chris. But I know this much: it wouldn't. I I just can't imagine someone doing that and playing right away. You don't know the playbook, you don't know your teammates. There's no chemistry there. You've had no time really. I mean, look at how difficult that is in the NFL, and those guys are professionals. But but then you also look, and let's say we get to the middle or the end, uh, beginning of summer ball, Lincoln changes his mind, decides he's not feeling it, and wants to go to North Dakota State. Making a transfer backwards into a smaller division might be easier for somebody who's – Yeah, if that if that rule exists for that, I, I, maybe you're right. Um but, and I'll be honest, I don't know. I just don't know that that's what the rule. The the rule just came out April what seventeenth or something like that. So, it's still very new. Um. So, given given what we have here, mm-hmm. we lost uh, to the portal. Let's let's take that for a quick second. Um. Keon Gray's yeah, not he's surprised. The last one in. We knew that one coming. Nigel Glover forgot we even had him. To be honest with you, Chris, he, <laughs> right. transferred, he transferred from Northwestern last year, and yeah. I don't even think he had a scholarly for the first year. Right, uh, and he's out again. Enoch Vamahi, I'm not surprised again. Yeah, we predicted that one. Jihad Carter wasn't surprised. Yep. Uh, Cedric Hawkins, wish he would have given it another year. Of development before, but he also made that not decision. surprised given the the depth in that defensive back room. Dallin Hayden goes to Colorado, disappointing oh. but not surprising. Yeah, Sam Hart went back to Colorado earlier in the portal season, um, but those were really the only losses. Nothing really. Dallin Hayden was kind of really the only one that that caught me a little bit. Yeah, so, because I thought he was going to play some significant minutes this year. I really did. Even with the two guys we got, I figured Dallin was going to be the guy who in an extended season was going to give rest to these guys. You know, you could see Ryan play, uh, you know, one of the guys had, you know, one of the guys during the game with Dallin and give one of them the week off if need be. You know, we saw how banged up our running back room has been in the past couple of years. I think that Dallin had a chance to be a significant contributor this year. So I was very disappointed to see him go. Yeah. But, you know, I thought for sure one of the quarterbacks were going to be there, and they're not mm-hmm. there. And, you know, we kind of went through that. But I feel like the coaching staff, coupled with probably the NIL collectives, have um, – have, uh, 
directed these waters, <laughs> driven the ship, if you will, through these choppy waters of, mm-hmm. of the spring portal season incredibly well. And given just the attitude of this team ever since they've been like, hey, we're coming back, we're chasing a natty, it's natty or bust, you made a you made the comment in spring ball, things feel very different around this program this year. Does the kind of the minor NIL departure, or not NIL, but portal departures signal to you that this team is singularly focused on achieving those goals. I think so. Yeah. Like I said, I think this is, we're seeing something very rare in college football right now. And that is we are seeing a team that had a goal. They haven't lived up to their own or anyone else's expectations And they've got that mentality of we've got a job to finish. This is a team that is absolutely focused. And going back to the quarterbacks real quick, I mean, you look, Ryan Day is a very innovative guy. Chip Kelly, very innovative guy. Could we see packages where maybe there's multiple quarterbacks in the game at one time? I don't know if we would see multiple quarterbacks maybe. in the game at the same well, time. Well, I'm saying gonna... maybe how you have a I Devin would, Brown would, or a I would a not be Lincoln shocked if Holtz line up it as a H back or I would not be shocked to see Devin Brown if Will Howard is indeed the starter to see Devin Brown have some some packages. Absolutely, I wouldn't be surprised if Aaron Nolan the, that guy RPO. showed. Yeah, that guy showed a lot of electricity as an. As there a, as there a could be some goal RPO line packages for him. So there, I think there's definitely some creativity that could be made, um, the, drawn up by this coaching staff for some of these guys. We, we will, we'll see, but I think it's important that they have one guy. They know who that guy is, and of course, we're going to be talking about that all summer long right here on the OHIO podcast, Chris, because no one has said anything about announcing who the starter is. I'm leaning towards Will Howard. I think you I don't agree. Bring, I don't think you bring him in like you did at NIL without giving him every opportunity to become the starter. But like you, Chris, I think that there's definitely a space in this offense for Devin Brown. And if, God forbid, something were to happen to the starting quarterback, I feel incredibly confident that we have a more than serviceable backup quarterback who might take the team to the promised land himself. So are we in a are we in a potential as far as the depth chart goes? Are we in a 2014 mode where if something, God forbid, happens, we feel confident enough that. We've got that guy two, three deep on the chart who can take us there. Given, given the defense, given the running game, I I really feel like it's a potential possibility. Now Lincoln hasn't looked great. Well, but you know what? Who's to say it's who's to say it's Lincoln in that? In right. That who's to say it's example. Lincoln? Who's to say? And the other thing is, I think that. I really don't think we'll see the same mistake that we saw before the bowl game. These guys are going to be coached up and ready to play this year. Yeah. And I think that's going to go. I think that very well could be one through five. We'll be coached up and ready to come off the bench as needed. Time will tell. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Ryan likes to learn his lessons. So yeah, that's, this is true. You're right. Time will tell. I'm looking forward to it. They'll have three easy uh, uh, cupcake games at the beginning of the season a la the team up north last year to prepare themselves for what is going to be the gauntlet in the in the new look Big Ten with trips a uh, trip to Eugene, a trip to uh, 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 over there to uh, Penn State home games against you well, you know, that team up north for one um, I think the Buckeyes will be ready this year, Chris uh, for those big moments and then of course the new college football playoff takes effect this year. And if uh, Ohio State goes on to win the Big Ten championship, that would mean that they would play uh, Michigan, the Big Ten championship game, 
and then three consecutive difficult games back to back to back to win a national championship. That's five more than likely top 10 to 15 ranked opponents in in five consecutive games. That, that is, would, as you said, a gauntlet. That, that is that a gauntlet. Is... Whoever, the, whoever comes out as national champion will truly earn this thing. That is that is for sure. Absolutely. Like, share, subscribe. You know the deal. We really do appreciate it. Please consider being a member. Only costs $3.99 a month. Just hit the join button right here on YouTube. Put in your credit card information, and you can uh, receive not only um, content that's made just for our members, but as Chris showed us there, you can get free shipping on things just like this, our OHIO podcast tumblers, which you can find on our store at theohiopodcast.com. Chris, till next time, OH. IO. Go Bucks.